Hello everybody, it's Van Bourbon here. Welcome to my first impressions video for Void Monsters Spring City Tales. Full disclosure, as always, I was sent a Steam key to review the game, have a look at it for free. So, yeah, am I biased? Maybe, but not because I've been sent it for free. Um, I'm more probably biased because the game is made using RPG Maker, the MV version, I believe, as well. So, the newest one, and I am naturally inclined to quite like RPG Maker games, um, having a lot of experience in it myself, so yes, but obviously because I right know how most of the stuff works, which is pretty cool. So I'm always impressed when I see something of this high level of quality come through from that, so I understand obviously the, the work it, it takes, or I have some understanding of it anyway. So the game is coming out on the 9th of March. Now, I'm going away shortly, so that's why I've decided to do this first impressions video rather than a review. A review would take a heck of a long time, I think, to actually be able to come up with a proper conclusion to this game. I really thought my first impressions would probably be the best way of, you know, doing it. So, because uh, I think, like, you'd have to put, you'd have to sink a good amount of hours in to get anywhere with this game. So I'm currently two hours in. There's a heck of a lot to do. I'm just going to have to start at the top of the list and work my way down and see what comes up on the screen um, while I'm talking. So, the premise of the game is you're an adventurer or you're a, you choose your history or your past experiences to a certain degree. You come back to your parents' failing farm. They owe a lot of money to the bank. Banks like the big evil corporation. They sort of give this whole air off about being quite evil. So all the people in town owe the money, they control the economy to a certain extent. Um, and yeah, your parents are in a lot of debt, but they've been killed off. I mean, usually the usually debts die with uh, people when they when they do pass away, but in this this in this universe that doesn't happen. So you've come back to take over the farm and to try and pay off the debt to the bank or you, you lose your house. So the way you lose the game is by having, as soon as the value of the house is reached by... So the, as in, every day the interest goes up on the house, the payments go, the amount owed goes up on the house. Should that reach the farm, sorry. Should that reach the amount that the farm is worth, you lose it, you're out of the game, basically. You can't die from the battles with the Void Monsters, as far as I'm aware. Um, during the tutorial, or the tutorial bit, it just said you, you know, spawn back at the uh, at your player house and you all healed up and everything. So, um, yeah, losing the battles are not really a massive deterrent. But I haven't lost one yet, actually. My first fight, which I wish I had recorded, was really, really tight. I didn't realise I had any other magic or anything like that. Um, and there are uh, there is a battle coming up very shortly in this, so we'll talk about the battle mechanics there. So the Void Monsters are a bit sort of like Digimon, Pokemon-esque, I suppose more Digimon with the way they sort of seem to be summoned. So as you saw before, I was in the temple, um, I managed to put down the rune stones, and they give you an egg for the monster. Now, I've got a couple of eggs for, for a couple of different monsters that I've had the rune stones for, but I can't yet get them in my party for whatever reason. Presumably that's something I will come across going forward, which usually happens. I usually have lots of questions thinking, well, how the heck do I do that? And eventually, you know, the game sort of feeds it to you at some point. You sort of work it out for yourself, which is quite nice. It doesn't, you know, babysit you. It does give you a, it does give you a bit of a challenge in terms of working out what and when you're supposed to do. So... You know, that's good. So the this is like one of the battles I've used more of a tactic in. So one of my tactics is if I come against two really strong monsters, put one to sleep, attack the other one while I do. Because they don't seem to wake up until they're attacked by yeah by yourself. So that then gives you a bit of time just to bully down the one and then go after the other. So it makes the battles a little bit more bearable that way. But it's nice that even this early on you can add a bit of tactics into the battle system. So one of the things I don't like, we're going to come on to things I don't like, but one of the things I don't like is how much the camera sways around between the battle. It doesn't feel like it needs to move that much. It's quite disorientating, especially when you're just going to, you know, volley through a few attacks like I was doing here over and over because there's not really anything else I can do, to be fair. So, yeah, that sort of thing I feel isn't the best. The turn-based system itself is perfectly fine. No issues with that whatsoever. Pretty standard, as you would expect. I quite like it. Your mileage may vary, 
but for me, yeah, no issues at all. I'd just like to maybe experiment with a few more void monsters and that sort of stuff and see how the combat evolves as you go on. But for now, no issues. All the moves seem pretty good, pretty, you know, pretty standard, but interesting enough. I'm happy enough with it all, so yeah. <laughs> I suppose that's what matters. Uh, one of the things, another thing I don't like, I suppose we'll probably just get a few of these out of the way right now. Um, the cursor is like, I should probably wait until it's up. Um, but the selection cursor is like this little sword with like the void all around it. It doesn't make a great cursor. In fact, it's a bit obnoxious. Um, the other issue I have is the NPCs. Now, luckily, you can turn off a lot of the NPC action and that sort of stuff. So that's nice. So if you're wanting to run it a bit more streamlined, that's fine, there you go, there's the cursor. Um, then, you know, that option is in there. But I feel as though their random movement needs to be a bit more restricted, so I think some of the tiles in the game need to be um, restricted so they can't actually move in that area. So, for example, when I was in the temple, the temple guy was avoiding me leaving. Um, the bit there, which had just happened, where I went in through the side of the wall into the building and everything, obviously, those sort of things happen. I mean, the game is that big that... It, you know, these things are going to come up. They are going to get some passable tiles that you're not meant to have. Um, obviously, those things probably, well, should be a really easy fix. There was another one there with the uh, with the house. I've noticed that quite a few times, but once again, they're pretty minor things. I didn't get stuck in there or, you know, I didn't have to, um, you know, reload or anything like that. So, yeah, it's, they're not, it's not egregious, but... These are definitely things that they can touch up, and it should, like I say, it shouldn't be too much of an issue to go back and do, and these things are going to happen, to be quite honest. So, a lot of the game is sort of, or the way, as you probably tell by the title, I've described it, is like Stardew Valley mixed with Pokemon. So, um, yeah, you do quite a lot of uh, farming for resources, whether that be with your goats, which I don't think we've seen yet, but we'll see them shortly, and also planting, planting crops, crafting glasses, uh, glass vials, and then making potions. So it's got a really nice tutorial section here, which you can access from your, your house at any point. Only gives you the very basics of each bit. So, for example, the things like collecting monsters. It then doesn't tell me what I do with the egg, or where the eggs are, because I can't even see my eggs. Presumably, at some point, I will find them. That's all I can think, mainly because I, I want to, you know, play around with all the different void monsters. So we'll get to that at some point, I'm sure. It's definitely a feel like a game I'll come back to. So it's 13 different crafting things, as it says in here, which is quite, which is massively expansive. Um, you can also go robbing, stealing. You can break into people's houses, nick stuff from their chests, do lock picking. Um, you know, the list does go on. It's pretty incredible, to be honest. Goat breeding, even. You know, whatever it takes. So at the minute, I'm bleeding money, as I would expect to do so in the in the first part of the game. But you can slowly see how you're able to accrue money a lot quicker. So, for example, my guy's now just gained the ability to be able to... Whenever he harvests a crop, he gets two instead of one. So I get two sand rather than one sand, or whatever that happens to be. So I was reading this bit as well about weakening the bank, so you can steal stuff from their warehouses, temporarily weaken them, get people paying off their loan. Like I say, the bank are set out to be the bad guys. You know, you everyone in town owes them a lot of money. And, yeah, if you can help pay, uh, pay them off, then the banks have a lot less authority, a lot less power in the, in the town. So the game runs on a day-night cycle. I'm not too keen on that. I mean, I guess it, it is probably needed. The crops grow really quick, so it's less of a grind as, in terms of Stardew Valley as that. You know, you can get pretty much everything everything done in a, in a day as well, which is quite nice. So this is what you get at the end of the day, and yeah, different things will affect it during the game. Uh, during your actions, during what happens with the economy, all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's really in-depth in a lot of aspects. And um, it, it sort of makes me feel like it's it's been a bit cluster-bombed, you know, throw everything at it, see what sticks, what doesn't. Um, a lot of it does, a lot of it works really well. Here we see the annoying postman who just keeps giving me quests after quests. I've got hundreds of them now. But luckily, the game has implemented a good quest system where you can choose which ones are active, which ones are not. So you can have only the ones you want showing in your quest journal at the left side of the screen. Maybe obnoxious for some. I quite like it just there as a little bit of a reminder of what's going on. So far, I'm not 
captivated by the story at all. Uh, it more seems to be the open world aspect of it that seems to be the most interesting so far. Um, just the progression of how it's going through, the few little quirky bits that it's got. But in terms of the actual dialogue, the quests, they all seem to be, unfortunately so far, a little bit uninspired. In terms of that regards, whether that will come through as I play more of it, once again, this is the first impression, just giving my first impression on how I feel about it thus far. You know, this could be a bit where they get you to, you know, experience it for yourself, see how you feel. And then, like I say, maybe there'll be some more story-driven stuff a bit later on. But, so far, I can fully recommend it. Like I say, if you're into either Pokemon or Stardew Valley, it's going to be well up your street. And yeah, thanks for watching everybody, see you very soon.